following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Nui Scruggs. Here we go on a Thursday, everybody. It is the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. I'm Nui Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, joined by former Dallas Cowboys defensive backs, Danny McRae and Barry Church. No Thursday night football. So, guys, what are we going to do with our, our entertainment time tonight? With no Thursday night? Man, I, I have no idea because I, 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 I looked on the little TV guide this morning and I was like, man, ain't no football. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I, I'm lost. Danny, help us out, man. I'm lost. Yeah, listen, I, I ain't going to lie to you. This is probably the most I've been into to watching uh, political stuff on TV as far as debates and CNN. So, I think tonight they have like the two, the two competing uh, town halls with Donald Trump and, and Joe Biden. So I, I, I'm going to be checking that out, you know, j- j- just to see, you know, what happens and, and what flash points I can bring back to you guys and laugh about and, and be upset about. So that, 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 that's what I'll be paying attention to tonight, you know, because Nui asked me well, about Ice Cube earlier. So, you know, I, I, we, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> Ooh, we. Is the fly going to so, make an attendance? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was for that was for Pence. That was for Pence. So not, not the vice presidents here involved in this. One. So, so McCray, have you found yourself becoming that person who sits down and watches one of these political shows, and the next thing you know, you're two hours into watching all of this stuff? I, I'm the guy now, so I change it. I change it from. Um, so I've never watched CNN before, but now. Every time I, I switch from CNN, I switch back to it within like on a commercial break or 30 minutes or something. If it's nothing on TV, for some reason, I know the exact channel that CNN is on and I'm just watching it just so <laughs> j- just so I can get on like I'm like I'm addicted to it, you know, but it doesn't affect me in my, you know, in my in my regular life. But some of that stuff is entertainment, especially in Cuomo Brothers. OK. All right. All right. That's I, I, but my best friend is a big CNN guy. He's he's into it, so um, okay, all right. It, it, I'll just say this: it, it, watching political TV, the cable networks can become addictive. So whether you're watching Fox, MSNBC, CNN, you can find yourself addicted to this stuff, and and you can look up in your watch and say, "Oh my gosh, I just spent two hours watching these folks go back and forth." So um, I would never Thursday watch night, Fox, by the way. No, I, I would never, shut up and dribble and turn me off of Fox. I will not. I will not turn my. I wish I could remove it from my universe. Well, that's that's. <laughs> you're talking about Laura Ingram Fox News, show, and that's yes. Fox News, the number the, the most Fox watched news. cable news network out there. So if you want to be, you know, you got your choices. I might go minus one, minus one. <laughs> they could, okay. Well, here's the good thing about Thursday Night Football: it means you guys can't make a wrong pick tonight. Like you did last ah, week. Here we so go. Here we I'm go. good for you guys. So I'm happy for you guys that you're free tonight, that you can go do that. Uh, personally, I am going to uh, either go watch the Dodgers and the Braves tonight at uh, the NLCS over at Arlington, or I will get back to reading uh, the book, Being John Lennon, uh, the the founder of the Beatles. So I've been uh, checking out his book. So I'll do one of those two things. Here. Let's dive into Andy Dalton, the Cowboys quarterback. Hopefully you picked him up on your fantasy team out there because if you didn't, what are you thinking about? If he's available, you need to go get Andy Dalton. He's going to put up some points here. I am one of those who thinks that the offense is still going to be able to generate points with Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton's a good quarterback, three-time Pro Bowler. When Andy was making the three-time Pro Bowls with Cincinnati, he had A.J. Green when A.J. Green was a legitimate number one receiving threat in the league. He had uh, Muhammad Sanu. He had Marvin Jones. He had real targets that he was able to hit. And then he also had Jay Gruden and Hugh Jackson who were able to coordinate good offenses in Cincinnati. And he also had Andrew Earth had a good line. So I think Andy Dalton's got a lot of those same qualities of players here with the Cowboys. And in some ways, you could even say a little bit better um, when you think about these three receivers compared to those three receivers in Cincinnati. So I'm not I'm not worried about Andy Dalton. I'm still worried about the Cowboys defense. What about you, McCray? Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about Andy Dalton. I'm worried about Kellen Moore. 
Uh, and I'm not worried about the defense because we already know, you know, what, what type of showing they're going to put out there or, or, or what we expect from them. I, I do expect them to hustle this game, but they're going against, a, a you know, a running quarterback and one of the top receivers in the league. And that just doesn't bode well for us. So I'm worried about Kellen Moore and his ability to stick to a game plan of running the ball with 21 and basing the offense and everything else off of him. Uh, Andy Dalton to put up his points if Kellen Moore does that. If he gets out there and asks Andy Dalton to throw it 50 times, we know that Andy Dalton can also be the opposite of the quarterback that he was in Cincinnati, which got him put out of there when he started throwing picks and, and, and making the game look bad. Uh, yeah, for me... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm worried about Andy Dalton right now. Um, look, I mean, this is a guy who's, you know, he's, he's been in the league for a long time. He's a vet. He's seen a lot of defenses. And it seems to me like when he got in the huddle last week, he kind of had the command of that huddle. He was calm. Um, and he, you know, he went out there and did his thing. Um, so I can say that, you know, Dallas here, I believe we have a lot more, much more talent offensively than he had in Cincinnati. So uh, when it comes to the regular season, uh, I don't think I'm worried about Andy. He should be able to to lead this team. Now I'm kind of worried if if we get to that you know to that promised land that playoffs. I'm worried about that because his, well, his track record. Yeah, his track record is not is not there. I'm, I'm gonna excuse what you just said over there because I told you what happened with that ten games thing. <laughs> but I, but back to the back to the point. I'm definitely still worried about this defense. I mean, we got a guy coming in here, Kyler Murray, Texas own. And he's dangerous. He's dual threat. I mean, he could do pretty much it all. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. And we've seen what our defenses can do so far against against elite talent like that. And it's not so much a stopping them. So for me, overall, not worried about Dalton, but this defense is still scares me to death, man. Let's stay on Kyler Murray. It was one of my talking points that I wanted to throw out there. If you're Mike Nolan, do you dedicate a spy to making sure you know exactly where Kyler Murray is all game long because this is a quarterback who will use his legs and use it as effectively as what we've seen a Lamar Jackson do in Baltimore Church. No, I don't, I don't think you use a spy in this situation because usually when you do that, when you leave that spy in there, it's your middle linebacker and he's kind of just hovering over there. And for me, I don't think we have that guy on our defense that can stick with um, Kyler Murray if he starts to use his leg and he wants to. Um, so for me, I'm, def- I'm going to play a lot of coverage similar to what um, Kansas City or not Kansas City. Uh, similar to what the Patriots did to the, their last guy they had to go against who could run the ball a little bit. I forget who they went against, but they dropped a lot of people in coverage and kind of had multiple sky, sp- spies, but they were also in coverage deeps. Mm, my bad, I got a little choked up in the throat. But uh, <laughs> they had spies over there, and they could basically, you know, lock down the pass as well as the run. So I wouldn't dedicate just one guy to him. I would, I would drop more people in coverage, and hopefully they all kind of have their eyes on him because if it's just Jalen Smith in there or if it's just Joe Thomas spying on him, he's going to make those guys look silly, and he's going to run the ball all over the place. So for me, I would have kind of a multiple spy look with also guys dropping back in coverage. Try to confuse them as much as you can. Yeah, listen, I, I got to disagree with you on that one. I, you know, as much as we do talk about Jalen Smith, I think one of his one of his the best things that he does is, is being able to track down guys. He has that type of speed. and He can make those plays side to side, you know, uh, in the game. So I, I would spy sometimes. But I think the most important part of this is having your D line make sure they stay in their rush lanes, because when you have a, 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 a running quarterback, the worst thing you could do is get too far upfield or, uh, on the defensive ends or in the interior, get out of your rush lanes and have that space open up for Kyler Murray to run. So I think it's more on the D line than it is on the linebackers because if, if these guys are able to hold the edges, stay in their lanes and don't get upfield, I think they can trap Kyler Murray in and, and, and cause them to make some mistakes. All right. So, McCray, let me ask this question. Let me just take it a different way. Do you put a spy on Kyler Murray on third downs when you're talking third seven third eight you know the kind of you know the kind of run where your quarterback can use their legs I, I saw Jared Goff do it against this team and I'm thinking if I got a guy like Kyler Murray you know uh, he's he, you have to to me I think you have to think of him as a running back on certain third down situations yeah on, on, on certain on certain lengths right if you get a third and one third and two it's, it's, it's no spying you got to man up and go attack attack your guy if you get a third and a long situation third and eight to third and 12 then i would look at putting Jalen out there you know having his eyes on him but sitting back at the like right in front of the sticks don't have him up there you know at the line of scrimmage getting lost in traffic up there around the uh around the d-line trying to stop him you know five yard shots of the uh of the first down have him sitting back helping out on the crossers and then attacking Kyler murray once he decides to run 
do we do we honestly think Jalen Smith can hang with Kyler Murray in the open field? No, I've seen Jalen Smith do some, do some, do some good things. I'm not, I'm not going to say that he's that, that he, he's 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 going to track him down every time, but I think that's the best chance that you have of stopping Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray you know, from anybody on your defense. Who who, who else who else you going to use? That's what that's why that's why I was getting. To, I mean, I think we got to drop more people and just have people in coverage with their eyes on them. I just don't know if, <laughs> if, if Jalen Smith. I just don't know if he can stop and start with Kyler Murray like that. And if everybody, I mean. Maybe we, maybe we play zone because if everybody's eyes are you know glued on their man and their back is turned to Kyler Murray, then you know he's going to take off. And if it's just one person there, it's going to be a long afternoon. So it, it's difficult, man. That's what you Church. do when you play against these dual threat quarterbacks, man. It's, it's difficult. Church, I don't want no eyes on Kyler Murray. We already got bad eye discipline as it is. If you get out there in zone, because because you you know how it is when you play in zone, church, and, and then all of a sudden the underneath cover starting to think that Kyler Murray is going to run, and he pulls up and throws a twenty yard dig or a, a thirty yard seven route, and then all of a sudden it looks like a, bl- a blown coverage. And as young as we are, we had we haven't been able to get our eyes right now. And this is not the game where I think that we we should try that. That's that's why they always say sink on the credit and break on the yep. cash, man. We got we got we gotta have good eye discipline, especially against a guy like Kyler Murray who can make your defense look so foolish. Uh, so for me, this is a tough one, man, because he has just as great of arm talent as he as he does with leg talent. So this is gonna be a tough one. I think you're right about the D line. It's gonna have to be up to the D line just doing their rush lanes, making the pocket condense on this guy. Because he, he's not a 6'4", 6'5", you know, Tom Brady prototype quarterback who can see over the line. So, if we, if, to me, if we collapse this line using that D-line, I think we'll have a, uh, a better chance of winning. But this, this is going to be a tough one. Who, who are going to be the starting D-line? You going to go <laughs> Poe and Crawford? <laughs> oh, Hex, they, I'll tell you, right, if they put Poe out there right now, Man, Tyler, Kyler Murray might run for about a buck fifty and throw for three hundred. <laughs> he gonna have all day back there, and we know Poe ain't ain't doing no type of pass rush. So, woo! You better put, you better get get some of uh, Marinelli's boys who can run on that D line. Who, who, who who's guarding D Hop? I mean, listen, we got a lot of problems on defense coming up this game. <laughs> we got we got Kyler Murray, we got D Hop back there, we got a bunch of a bunch of young guys. It's not gonna be as easy as it was against uh, against the Giants. So. We got to come ready, and uh, some of those matchups, I, I see them giving us some issues. Mm. I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a name of a guy if you're playing fantasy football, um, and obviously if you've got DeAndre Hopkins, you roll him out there. There's you know he's an automatic start, but if, if you have Christian Kirk sitting on your bench or he's available in your in your waiver wire, go pick him up. This is a perfect mm-hmm. type of Christian Kirk kind of game because. Look, if Mike Nolan, Mike Nolan can't just leave his guys one on one with Hopkins, you got to go ahead and put somebody over the top to worry about to. him. But a kid like Christian Kirk, who's you know speedy and fast, I mean, this is a guy who can can go ahead and and, and hurt the Cowboys. So I ended up picking him up this week, and I just said, you know, this is the, this is a perfect matchup for a guy like Christian Kirk to just kind of get lost in the sauce. And, and be able to uh, have a good game. Plus, being a Texas A&M guy, he's played at AT&T Stadium before. So I, I think that Christian Kirk uh, can have – I mean, I think, I think all three wide receivers on both teams could probably have a nice, a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I expect each side to have 30 points in this one. So, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking – You expect, you expect nice. Amari Cooper to have a big, a big day this week? You, you expect him to show up this week? Woo-wee, boy. Mm, you, mm. I tell you, man. You said all three. I, 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 I wanted to know he was included. Oh, okay. Yes. He yes. was at home last week. <laughs> he was at home last week. We wasn't in New York. Is it, it, is it because he went to Alabama? I'm trying to say, what's, what did this man do to you? What, what did he do to what you? Did, what did <laughs> Omar, so listen, I think it comes down to fantasy. I think it comes listen, down to fantasy. Listen, dude. Let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. He's a good fantasy I, I, player. I, I, He's a good fantasy player. No, 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 no. He, he gave me three points last week. Uh, but but listen, <laughs> I don't I don't have a problem with Amari Cooper. I think that he has the ability to be a top receiver in the league. And when they focus the offense on him, and he goes out there and he plays one hundred percent, and he's you know he doesn't have any nagging injuries, he's one of the top receivers. For some reason, yeah. we just have we we have not done that. We, we, they, the, what we seen that they got him paid one hundred million, we have not seen that this year. And everybody can say he got a lot of catches. He's top in the league. All this other stuff. All our receivers are. We had to throw the ball 60 times a game for the first four games so we can come back. They should have a lot of catches. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> now, I'll take what you said about Amari Cooper and also raise that same thing about Ezekiel Elliott. For a guy that you paid as much money to, Kellen Moore hasn't used him the way they need yeah, to. Yeah, that's it. I, but, Newley, I've been saying this the whole time. I, I said the offense right. should revolve around 4, 21, and 19. And I've, I've said this the, the, the entire time. Kellen Moore has not done that. Right. He has not yeah. done that. And it seems like he's focusing on 88 versus 19 to me. So, th- that, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm just – I'm lost on it. But, but I'm not mad at Coop. It's, a, but, it's his but new you toy in his toy chest. But you don't give 21 that same heat. You know, you don't give him that same heat that you give Coop. That's why, that's why no, I don't understand. No, that's what I'm talking no about. listen – Louie, are you serious? Listen, so last year we had this thing with Coop not being on the field on fourth down. We had this 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 thing with him being a missing man every time we go on the road. This year yes. we have him last, last game uh, playing sixty five percent of the snaps and getting one target in the first half. That uh, that, 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 that is not Zeke. You got to turn around and hand the ball to Zeke. He's getting targeted. Sometimes Kellen Moore just not calling run plays. When I'm talking about uh, Coop, what we're seeing on the field is not. A hundred million dollars worth. Zeke, Zeke looks a lot different to him, and, and we saw last week when Zeke is a, a, a focal point in the game, it changes the whole entire momentum for us. Is it the play caller or the player? Because I feel like you're going after the player. It's both. No, 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 I, no, 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 no. I said it's both. So, so knew it was. So, so the Amari Cooper played sixty five snaps last week. I mean, sixty five percent of the snaps. His snap count was unacceptable for one hundred million dollars. We are in agreement there. So, but so, but so do you think? Do you think that was the coach? Do you think that was the coach taking him out, or that was his choice? Mm, if you got a hundred billion, you should be uh, able uh, honest, to decide honestly, when you're on and off the field. Yeah, honestly, I don't know how it works there. So, so I'd, I'd be sitting up here lying if I told you I understood how. Let, 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 they let, let, let me help you. Let me help you. Amari uh, Cooper has the choice to be on the field when he, when he's ready to go. There's nobody snatching him off the field telling him that he can't get on the field. I've seen veteran guys say, "You're not pulling me out the game." He has the ability to do that. He's a hundred million dollar man. He can do that. So he's my opinion is he needs to. Be, yeah, he should, him him D Law Zeke and Dax all have that type of power. Okay. Or should. Okay. Okay. All right. This is an interesting Ooh. question. And, and, and once again, this is what I hate about COVID and us not being able to go in the locker room and have conversations with guys uh, offline where you can, can, can get a little bit more insight as to, to, to what is going on here. But look, I, I'm not doubting you in terms of the $100 million man. Um, you'd like to see him do more, but I, I still am concerned about the play call. And that, 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 to me, has also been a very big part of my frustrations of, of watching this offense. And so you and I, are, we're in agreement a little bit there, but I just feel like, though, your venom for 19 is just a little strong. No, no, strong. We're, we're, like we're, little we're, we're, in a, we're in agreement on both. Coop is not showing up like, like, I, like I believe he should for $100 million, and Kellen Moore is not focusing on him or Zeke enough in the offense. So I'm, 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 I'm on both of those. All right, let's take a break here. We've uh, got a lot more to cover. Leighton Vander Esch, could he be in the lineup for the Cowboys for Monday Night Football against the Arizona Cardinals? Let's dive into next on the Players' Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. Hey there, Cowboys fans. With tight cleaners at home pickup and delivery, cleaning your clothes has never been more convenient. Simply sign up at your local store, set out your dirty clothes, and one of our Tide Cleaners professionals will come directly to your home for a totally contactless experience. Your clean garments will be returned promptly the next scheduled delivery day, so skip the errand and enjoy life, not laundry. Visit TideCleaners.com or your local store to sign up for Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery today. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. 
new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. To the Players Lounge. Players Lounge here on a Thursday. We are brought to you by Hotels.com. We are in our SWBC Mortgage Virtual Home Studios. Danny McCray, Barry Church, Newey Scruggs with you. Those two guys played for the Dallas Cowboys. I merely covered the team. By the way, if you're coming to a Cowboys game this season, make sure you know before you go. Wear a mask. Keep a distance. Be prepared for cashless transactions. Please be aware of all safe stadium policies prior to arriving at AT&T Stadium. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash safe stadium for details. And also, this is right up your alley. Danny McCray, since you're from Houston, Houston folks like this kind of thing. The Monster Jam returns to AT&T Stadium October 24th and 25th. This adrenaline charge, family entertainment features some of the most famous trucks in the world with the world-class drivers who push these perfectly engineered vehicles to their limits in freestyle, two-wheel skills, and racing competition. Get your tickets now at SeatGeek.com for the Monster Jam. Monster okay, okay, Houston, I, home of the, like home of the monster jams, I, I, huh? I, I, okay. I went to see that one time when I was when I was younger, man. It was pretty cool, but it's it's it's, it's a one and done for me. But I'm sure some people in Houston do like that. It should All be right, enjoyable, uh, man. Hey, by the way, your your Houston Rockets need a general manager. Daryl Morey got run up out there. So uh, All they, they got to do is call me. That's it. Called it a resignation. All they got to do. We know. Just call church, man. No Shadamas church will get you right. That's all you need. All right, Houston, that's all you need. Okay, right? Like you said, the Bills was going to win by 14. Hey, hey, oh ain't God. nobody talking about that old stuff. Ain't, no, ain't nobody talking about that old last, stuff, man. You, you had last, Thursday night, last Thursday night, you had Tom Brady. You said Uncle Tom. So Uncle Tom was going to handle the <laughs> Uncle <last> Tom. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, my, my, you know what I'm saying? Look, okay. <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead and swipe all that under the rug, man. Let's get on to what's going on. <laughs> Uncle I mean, Tom. Hey, and, that's up. My boy Uncle, Uncle Tom, Tom, man. Then you had, the, <laughs> you had the Cowboys winning big, too, on Sunday, too. 35-21. Had the Cowboys 35-21 on them Giants. So, okay, Church, you on a roll. Okay, okay. Hey, you know, it, but what happened before that? We, we ain't talking about what happened before all these all these calls, how I did a string of just... <laughs> Greatness, you know what I'm saying? We just, we just gonna exclude all that, huh? Greatness. That's how I got the name Greatness. Nostradamus I will, Church. I will have to go self proclaim my notes. I have to check my hey, notes. Ain't no, some of this ain't stuff no here, self proclaimed. Ain't no self proclaimed. The streets, the streets gave me this name, right? Nostradamus Church. <laughs> I just pick them all. I'm a, I get them right. That's the streets. The streets was talking, man. That's all I'm saying. Keep the note, keep, no, keep the note so, so we can tell them this up at the end of the season. Uh, ten and well, six. Said, ten and six. He said. He said ten and six. Louis, don't forget that. Right. Have that down too. Yeah. So now we just okay, gonna so, put words in, in my mouth. That's what we. Oh man. Now we just lying. So, All right. So, All so, right. so so since I keep no, church, you did say Tampa Bay twenty seven, um, the Bears thirteen. So I'm just going to the, the Bears one by one. So I'm just going on some of the notes I got I, here. I did say that. I did say that. You right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you had you yeah. had the Cowboys thirty five, Giants twenty one. Um, we got the dub though. We got the dub. Got the dub. <laughs> I, I was half right. I was half right. Bu- Buffalo by fourteen on Monday night. Buffalo lost by you know, 20, 20 points. <laughs> hey, hey, look, 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 look. See, I see what I'm saying. Y'all just picking and choosing. What happened to the ones before that? We ain't talking about week two, three. What you don't even remember those. those? I mean, I'm, trying to find, I'm trying to find my notes here. I mean, these are the man. Newy over there cooking the books, man. Ain't nobody looking. Newy over there cooking the books, man. The the, books, man. the, 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 la- the last thing Church got right, and I've been wrong too, but the last thing Church got right is Lakers over Heat. Yeah. That's the last thing he got right. Basketball, basketball. <laughs> That's how we go. Oh man! All right, you know what? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start writing my own notes. See, see, see. Y'all like a double team on your boy over here, man. I, I see what's going on. All right, so we got Chris Beam, our church. producer. You hear us, Chris Beam? So make sure you get these notes down because Nui over there cooking the books. We ain't talking about how I was right all those other times. We just gonna forget the about the eye in the sky. Don't lie. The eye in the sky. Don't lie. We can always rewind this. 
We can rewind this. Don't worry. We, 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 we will have video evidence of you being wrong. Oh, the eye in the sky don't lie, man. <laughs> Late oh, Van Der Esch. Late Van Der Esch practice today. Full go, according to mm. Mike McCarthy. Cowboys mm. get an extra day of rest as they get ready to host Kyler Murray and the 3-2 and two Arizona Cardinals. So I was kind of saving this. We were talking before about a possible spy for one Kyler Murray, especially on those third and sevens, third and eights. I mean, we saw Matt Ryan and the Falcons come in to AT&T Stadium and convert a couple of those. So is Van Der Esch a guy that maybe you say, hey, you know what? Be on the lookout for, for QB1 on some of these third third and seven, third and eight plays where this kid can use his legs and convert first downs. Church. Look, man, I'm Vander Esch, be careful out there, man. Be careful, because what? This is only, what, six weeks or five weeks since he uh, lasted his collarbone? Yes, five. Yep, yeah, so be careful. I mean, we saw what happened, you know, when cats come back too early from, uh, from collarbone. You saw what happened with Romo back in 15. You know, he hurt his collarbone, I think, in week two, and then came back for that Thanksgiving game and, and re-injured it. And um, he never, you know, Carol- he never the saw Carolina the field ever game, again. Yeah. Yeah, the Carolina game. So for me, you know, Van Der Esch be extremely careful out there because, like we said, the neck and all that area up there is nothing to play with. Uh, but over, but besides that, I can see him. I can see him, you know, because I feel like he has a little bit better start and stop than um, than my boy Jalen Smith over there. So I can see him kind of being a better spy if you if you do choose to just do that one person spy system. But to me, um, I mean, Kyler Murray has the ability to make anybody look foolish. So. Whew, man, it's going to be tough for that one guy to be the spy on him for me. So even if it's Van Der Esch. So overall, I just think it's going to be a tough situation to me play zone, D-line, step it up. Yeah, the, for me, I think Van Der Esch is the prime example of like one of those players who like suffers injuries back to back and they continue to, to, to fight injuries and then they will risk anything to come back. Right. So it's like no matter how he's feeling, he's going to say he's feeling good just so he can get back out there on the field and prove to himself that he's not injury prone. And I think this is one of those cases, man. He's He has a neck problem already, and now he has a collarbone problem. He's going to come out here and play middle linebacker and bang heads against uh, offensive linemen and fullbacks all game. I think that's it's, it's a little soon for that. And, uh, you know, as far as him being a spy, I wouldn't even have him on the field uh, at that time. Depending on what personnel and what down the distance they are, I, I say they bring another DB in, let Jalen Smith be the only linebacker out there, especially if you're going to have him spying and, and, and just let it play like that. Do not have Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch out there on third and 12 uh, trying to defend these guys out there on defense. Uh, I, I think the best way to do it is add, a, add an extra DB out there, get some speed. And, uh, you know, and, and let it play that way. And, Church, I'm still against you. I think uh, Jalen Smith has a better chance at, at catching and tackling uh, Kyler Murray than, than LVE at this, at this point. If, if, if Jalen Smith is out there spying, we ain't going to see no swipes. I'm going to tell you that, right? The only swipe <laughs> we're going to be seeing is my man hitting the ground. Man, I missed him again. So, look, I'm, I'm telling you, do not put Jalen Smith out there. But you, you propose a good point, though. Uh, so I'm going to ask both of y'all. Do y'all see the Cowboys just bringing an extra defensive back in on those situations? Maybe a, you know, a Darian Thompson or one of the safeties, um, number 40. Who was out there? Steven Parker. I thought it was McCray out there last week with number 40. So do y'all put, <laughs> do y'all put an extra DB in there to spy on him? I'm going to take y'all take on that one. McCray, I would start with a linebacker, then I would go to a uh, DB. Okay. All right, yeah, what about you, Danny? Uh, like I said, it, 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 to me, like I said, it, it depends on the personnel and the down the distance, right? You take if it's like if it's third and five or shorter, yeah, leave your linebacker in there. Once it gets to that 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 down the distance to where you're almost 100 percent that it's going to be a pass, take that linebacker out of there, put your DB in there, get some speed and run some games with him. You know, hopefully, you know, uh, Nolan can come up with something creative that the players can pick up and run, and then you know we can create some havoc for Kyler Murray, make it hard on him out there. All right, time for another break right here on the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. When we return, Barry Church un- unveils his underperforming Whoa. talents. Oh, so we do. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we <laughs> promised it to you. We promised it to you. Oh, I see what's going down out so, here. Okay. So we're going we to sit up here and let Barry, Barry Church run down some of these Cowboys. <laughs> 
Oh, I see what the game is. Underperforming. That's next right here on the Players' Lounge on DallasCowboys.com radio. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor! Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. To Dallas' frontline responders, thank you. To show its gratitude, Tide is offering free laundry services in Dallas to the families of frontline responders. Simply bring your laundry and your identification to Tide Cleaners, and they will wash it within two days. One thing less for you to worry about. While you take care of us all, Tide will take care of the laundry for the families of frontline responders. To learn more and find a location near you, visit hope.tidecleaners.com. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. To the Players' Lounge. Hey, are you craving AT&T Stadium's famous Cowboys cheesesteak, nachos, or Cowboy Rita when you're watching the Cowboys at home? Bring your favorite stadium fare to you. Place your order online for pickup at a local and, and lo, or local delivery every week this season. Check out the menu at and Stadium. Uh, dot com slash at home. So one day I think I'm going to have to try that Cowboys cheesesteak. Remember, no players lounge on Monday, all right? We are off. It is game day, so there's no podcast, okay? No podcast. We're with you tomorrow starting at 2.30, but uh, no podcast on Monday. I am Newey Scruggs, longtime Cowboys reporter, joined by former Dallas Cowboys defensive backs Barry Church and Danny McCray. And now I'm going to get out the way. Because Barry Church <laughs> about to take that spotlight on his underperforming Cowboys. He's about to make it hot. So, Church, take Lord, it away. Lord. Can't so, wait. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give y'all my milk carton list. I'm going to give y'all the list of the guys <laughs> that, you know, so far this season, they just haven't been performing to what we thought they would. Um, side note, we don't have a Players' Lounge podcast on Monday, but check your boy out on the pre- and post-game show, DallasCowboys.com. I want to throw that in there. But, um, look. <laughs> The all milk carton team for your boy. Since my other two co-hosts over here, they, they seem scared to go ahead and put their milk cartons out there. But I'm going to put uh, mine out there. Uh, uh, I got my list. First and okay. foremost, the captain of the milk carton team. The guy who probably got everybody else say, hey, let's run away. Let's, you know, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here before our parents see us. I'm going to have to put Poe as the number, Don Terry Poe, number <laughs> As my number one milk carton, all American milk carton, all whatever you want to say it team. I mean, look, we brought this guy in as a free agent, you know, gave him three and a half mil guaranteed. So, look, he, he's staying. I don't see him getting cut or anything like that once you get that type of money guaranteed. And what has he done here so far? Nothing. I mean, we've seen this guy line up at the D tackle, but end up back in the secondary for some reason. We've seen this guy just <laughs> not look athletic at all on the football field. So for me, he has to be the number one on my milk carton list. Number two. And this is, you know, after Poe, it goes no particular order after this, because I feel like these guys, I mean, they made plays, but they, they also haven't played to their price tag. So number two on this list I'm going to have to do it. I hate to do it. You hate to see it. But I got to put my boy Crawford on there. I mean, look, this is a guy who I played with for a number of years, four or five years. And he's always been that kind of 
kind of spirit, kind of kind of that leader of the D line. He doesn't put up great stats, but he's always had those quarterback pressures. He's always been disruptive in the backfield, and so far we haven't seen him. I mean, through weeks what two through what two through four, I was asking Nui if he was hurt or not because I didn't know if he was going on the field. But supposedly he's been on the field. His play just hasn't been there. So for me, I got to put Crawford on this list. I'm sorry, big dog, but I got to put you on the list. Uh, number three. I got to put my man in the secondary, Jay Lou. I mean, look, Jordan Lewis, last year, he was a ball magnet. He was all over the field. He was getting interceptions. He was forcing fumbles. He was doing sacks. I mean, he, he was all over the field last year. And I thought coming into this season, he could be our best defensive back. But so far this year, I mean, we've seen eye discipline issues. We've seen penalties. We've seen him getting killed in the slot. So for me, Maybe those injuries early in the training camp has something to do with it, but he also made this milk carton list. Now, last but not least, let me go ahead and get back to my notes here. Hold on. Last but definitely <laughs> not least, we got the former pro bowler, the guy who everybody touted coming from Minnesota. Man, we got this guy coming in. He's, our D-line, it got to be top three now. And we brought him in here, and all we've seen is what, one sack? I don't even know if he got pressures out there. And yes, I'm talking about Everson Griffin. This is a guy who he's a vet of all vets in Minnesota. He was doing damage year in and year out. He just came off of a Pro Bowl. So I don't know what his problem is coming to Dallas and playing like the way he is. But to me, he's made the all court carton list. And now, look, this is the first list. This is the first list. We still got the rest of the season to go. So maybe these guys can work their way off the list and maybe we won't have one later on. But as for right now, I'm going to need these guys to show up. Haven't seen them all season. Come on, guys. Let's get let's get better. Uh, I like that list, Church. Uh, you know that that, that like really that wasn't list? bad. I, I like the way you broke it down with the descriptions, and you know uh, my my list. You know is going to go in a totally different direction. All right. All uh, right. You know on the counter on the counter Nui and the Kool Aid. Number one on my list is head coach Mike McCarthy. I do oh, not I know, know a lot what of coaches on here. Listen, okay. uh, right. uh, no, he, he getting he, he getting paid. All right, so underperforming. <laughs> yeah, he's getting All right. <laughs> so, so Mike McCarthy, I, I don't know what he has going on. I really don't even know what he's really doing on the sideline. I know Newey always talked about Jason Garrett just being a clapper. Um, I'm not really sure what Mike <laughs> McCarthy is doing on the sideline unless he's going to snatch that play, that play calling uh, ability from Kellen Moore. Number two. Mr. Nolan, who was hired by Mike McCarthy. This is underperformance. This is this is from the top down. What is the defense doing? We have no idea. I don't need to get into it. They don't need to hustle every play. He, he, he's not commanding any any accountability from the players because they're coming online saying that, that, that they don't have to run to the ball and, and it's impossible to do so. Mr. Nolan. And all the coaches on here, goodness, Mr. Fossil, what are we doing on special teams? <laughs> we continue to make mistake after mistake. You put these guys in positions to do dumb, crazy stuff, fake punts, not cover fake field goals, bring the ball out of the end zone, getting stopped on the one yard line, hurting the offense with a starting field position. Horrible. And this, these next two are based off of, on, on account of Mr. Kellen Moore. My man, 21, who doesn't get enough touches and somehow has, 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 has grown accustomed to fumbling the ball at the beginning of the season, which we hadn't seen from him previously. I just need him to hold on to the ball. I need Kellen Moore to focus the play, uh, the play calling more around him. And you already know how I feel about my man, Amari Cooper. Goodness. I know. And, 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 I, and, and the reason that I stay on him like this is because I know how good he is and what we're supposed to be seeing from him. And we're just not doing it. And I think it's Kellen Moore's job to get him more involved in the game, get him the ball in more ways. This is what I thought we would see at the beginning of the season. And we haven't seen the uh, the play call and focus on number 21 and number 19. So those are my underperformers. There are there are plenty more. But those are the ones on my list that stick out. And uh, hopefully they get off on the next list. So, gentlemen, I have an interesting question here. <laughs> Because prior to last week, you would have put Tank Lawrence on this list. But last week, he records his first sack of the season. It was a sack strip, which resulted in a defensive touchdown. Is that why he did not make either one of your lists? No, yeah, no, we we found him. I found him. All right, he he well, was got, on the APB. He was on the missing man's list. But I, I mean, we found him. We had a search party. I, and we found him the other day. Not not true. I, I didn't. I, I had eight people on my list, and uh, I didn't want to keep going because Church didn't have eight. 
But uh, D-Law and Jamin Smith made my list as well. I just I just didn't want to go into it and, you know, seem like my list was extremely long. D-Law, he said it himself. The defense is playing soft. He expects more from himself. And this is just the start, hopefully. But I'm not accounting that, uh, you know, as finding D-Law or anybody else on defense because it was the Giants. We got to see this against a team <laughs> with a winning record who is able to really play the game of football. The Giants don't count to me. All mm, right, let, mm, me ask, mm. let me just ask about another guy not on either list here. And you did put Lewis there, but what about Cheeto? Here's a corner in the last year of his deal, and you know, he spoke on social media how, hey, you know, it's the last year, contract year, and they, it, uh, he was going to be a better player. And he's battled injuries, and when he has played, he, he's, he's struggled. So your thoughts on Cheeto, who's he at? Look, for me, uh, we know where he is. He's in the training room right now. And um, so he can't make the list because we know where he is. And, and look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit biased because, you know, Cheeto, he's, he's with my agency. Or he's with my old agency. So, you know, I can't really, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really dog him out like that too bad. So uh, he, he didn't make my list. But, you know, I'm a little biased. So I can't really, uh, can't really judge on this one. Well, 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 let, well, let me get it for you then, Church. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is not nah, honestly. So this is this is why this is why Cheeto and Jordan weren't on my list, because I really didn't expect anything spectacular out of them this season. When you come to D-Law and you go to Jalen Smith and you go to Coop and the coaches, I expected so much more out of them with Cheeto Even and after, Jordan uh, Lewis. Even D-Law had five sacks? I, yes, I still expected more. I, I, I thought that was going to be a down season, and he's going to come back this season with a new defensive coordinator, everything brand new, and get this thing rolling. When you come to Cheeto and Jordan Lewis, it, could, it was up and down for me. We hadn't really seen these guys play at a superstar level, so I didn't expect them to all of a sudden be able to, to be a superstar and be some these huge difference makers on our defense. So that's why they didn't make my list, uh, because the expectation for them was not as high as the rest of the people that I had on there. All right. Um, injuries are, are a problem here with this particular player. But when I think of just underperforming, and I just wonder your thoughts here, how do you view Leighton Vander Esch? Because we spoke you know, before the season about our questioning of, of his ability to stay healthy. And so you've got Sean Lee, who has not played one snap all year long, and you got Leighton Vander Esch, who got hurt in the first game. Not having these two guys, to me, has been a very big reason why this defense has underperformed here. So um, would you put Van Der Esch on that list? And a part of it, just his inability to, to answer the bell. Yeah, that's uh, a tough one, man. Go, go ahead, d Matt. I'll let you go, go ahead. Get this one in. Well, I, listen, guys, I, I always really sound like I'm beating these guys up. I'm going to preface this by saying – by no means was I a great defensive player, right? So I'm I'm just speaking of my opinion on what I see on film. LVE hadn't looked the same since they played the Rams. Um, so my expectation for LVE coming into the season and what I had seen from him after the Rams game when I saw us getting bullied around in the playoffs, uh, it, it, it wasn't that high either. So I didn't expect much from him, and I, I would not hold it against him not being able to stay on the field, especially in a year like this where injuries are just all over the place and you never know who could be out. I'll, I'll chalk that up to this being the COVID season. But like I said, I, he, he hadn't been the same since, since we started saying that him and Jalen could be the best linebacker duo in the, uh, in the NFL. And for me, I'm going a, I'm to a go ahead and, and – uh I'm going to hold out on this one. I'm, I'm a, the jury's still out on this one. Um, like I said, man, this, this guy, I think, I mean, after his rookie season, I think this guy has the potential to be one hell of a player. It's just, is he injury prone? And right now, I mean, he, he's proven that right. I mean, these two back-to-back -back seasons where injuries kind of hampered him or limited him in some shape, uh, form, or fashion. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and, and let the jury, you know, we're still out right now on, on Van Der Esch, and COVID has messed up a lot of things. So we'll, we'll see when he comes back or even maybe next year what his playlist will be. But um, right now, the jury's still out. But, but Nui, where, where's your list at, man? Where's your, where's your milk carton list at, Nui? Uh, gentlemen, it is... Three fifteen. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's fourteen. <laughs> it's fourteen. Today. It's fourteen. Man, man it's no, no, I tell you what, it man. Is fifteen. I tell you we, what. <laughs> our producer Chris Beam has a lot of back-to-back -back shows here, so we don't have overtime to go in here Ooh. and get anything. But I appreciate you guys coming in here and giving us your list and making it hot. Mm. 
<laughs> we're going to put on a milk carton that are not performing. So that'll be it for the show today. But we'll be back tomorrow, everybody. We'll have our predictions for the Arizona Cardinals game. We'll see if Barry can get one right here or if you can get close. And, uh, and, and we'll have some news at 2.30. Friday, right here. Oh, on man. DallasCowboys.com. That's Barry Church. That's Danny McCray. I'm merely New East Have a great day, everybody. I'm, Take care. Goodbye. Man, they ain't, they ain't give him an Emmy for nothing, man. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Boy, New, he, he's a master. He's a master of this. He's a master of this. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?